Hello, everybody. Uh, today I want to talk about the uh, something that I hear an awful lot about, and um, something that I've been thinking a lot about lately, and that's the asymmetrical nature of consciousness. Now, we know that you know we all hear this thing about all oh, the duality and the you know the whole thing of the the, the left hand, the right hand, positive, negative, and all this stuff and everything, and that is true. But ultimately, the the ultimate agenda of these these dualities, these polars, is to create a, a balance. You know, this is what, in terms of a sort of a, we talk about a person who's worked on themselves in their psychology and in their spiritually, they would have a, intellectually, they would have, we would say they would have a balanced, a balanced mind, or, a, you know, or centered. That's a, a very nice expression. I quite like that. The idea of being centered. Now, this is a, this is a very profound idea that goes very deeply into all aspects of the cosmos. Uh, Chris McManus wrote a fantastic book called Right Hand, Left Hand, which was all about the origins of this uh, duality within our brains and within culture, and even down as far as things like atoms and the uh, subatomic world, and showed how, you know, how, how strategic, how important this is to our existence, and actually the, the underlying structure of the, uh, the cosmos. Now, uh, within our lives and within ourselves, we will always try to find this balance within ourselves. This is why we seek out we seek our partners in our relationships. If we're single, we try to incorporate the duality of male and female into ourselves as well. It can also be very healthy in its own kind of way also. And that's why, you know, when people, and like, I can remember I did some speaking dates recently, and, and one of those common questions people ask me is, this, oh, well, how do you find your soulmate? And the thing was, like, you know, it, it's like, it's your soulmate yourself, okay? Ultimately, it's yourself. Now, I have a uncle who's a transsexual and uh, transgender and he became a woman and uh, I, hopefully he isn't watching this but uh, I, 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 I think I know why he, he became transgender. He is very closely to us. Now I'm not saying he did anything wrong. You know, this is not what I'm implying. I'm just underlying my theory of why he actually became transgender. He had a very good relationship with his wife and uh, they were a very, very happy couple. and. Uh, they seemed obviously very balanced to me, and they had two children, you know, and it was like, it just seemed, she died of breast cancer, and uh, soon afterwards, he he became a woman, and I think he was what, you know, he's a great book, well, a great woman now, he's, but, uh, you know, he's a really nice, he's got a good soul, he's a good person in there, regardless of his biology, and I think that it was a desire to reconnect with his lost wife, and the strong feminine uh, relationship that he had back into him and her in, as a woman, and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. You'll find that exists also in, in gay relationships. Both, both the most successful and happy gay relationships are generally where you have a male-female archetype. But that's very crude language. It's really, you know, it's really about an, an energy giving and receiving thing within the either the lesbian or the gay couple and indeed the heterosexual couple, and then more importantly, taking that down to deconstruct that within the individual. Now, <clears throat> we talk about people being centered, centered. Well, this is actually, can be, can be a pain. If your consciousness, if your underlying consciousness is centered, all you have to do to get it centered is actually begin working on yourself. And there's, there's two paths to that, to self-reflection and creativity. That's why artists tend to see that the world is a mess before anyone else. And we, you know, that's why artists are, you know, artists understand that we live in a, in a, in a distorted construct. And that's what their art is about, whether it be music or anything. Now, creativity and working on yourself together is the best one of all. Uh, if you can do that, you're, you're really flying. And that's why, and this can be, like I said, if we put people under MRI and we see their brain activity, or someone we would actually say is, is, is centered, such as, you know, uh, you know, someone who's like working on themselves, even if they're not well, they're still working on themselves in a creative sense, in a, in a self protective sense. Their, their frontal lobes of their brain, you'll see the electric, electric activity is perfectly balanced between the frontal lobe and also between the limbic parts of their brains. It's, you can see that there's the duality within the actual MRI readout where a psychopath who's incapable of working on themselves because they're not connected to the underlying same consciousness the rest of us are, uh, their brains process information chaotically and you can see that the psychopath is indeed not centered. Now, you can see this trust for uh, for the, the, the asymmetry of consciousness, in, in particularly in native peoples. You will see uh, 
like you said, the groups like the Maasai in Africa, you'll see that in Kenya and in, in Ethiopia, you'll see that many of the ceremonies involving men, they dress up like women. And uh, this is also to, in the same cultural way, uh, transcend the, the gender gap uh, and fuse the asymmetric asymmetry of their consciousness into the, the balanced centered archetype, which would be a man, a Maasai warrior is an enormous man. Uh, they, they live almost exclusively on animal blood. They have enormous sexual organs, an enormous penis. Uh, they're tremendously fertile. There's vast amounts of oxytocin in their sperm. Uh, yet, they still become a woman during these ceremonies, and that's part of the balancing thing that my uncle, who's a transsexual, is actually has undergone through surgery, but it's the same thing. Now, uh, this is also uh, very interesting where, where in today's context, because we're actually living in an age where it's easier to find a sort of a, a, a balanced symmetry to your consciousness, thanks to the internet. No matter where you live, even in the most, you know, sort of like, culturally dead suburb, it, you can actually find this balance and the, the drive towards it. That's why, now, you know, that's what, uh, in my other video, the purpose of the, about the, uh, the, that's the main purpose of the, the conspiracy movement from where I'm standing, uh, is to help bring people back to a balance centered. Uh, that's next to native peoples, just like the Maasai I have, uh, I have uh, just mentioned. They're, you know, these people who are working through this, this crazy conspiracy world towards this, there's towards something, whatever that is, it doesn't matter, even if it's failure, they're still balanced. Now, so that's, you can be, you don't have to go and stay in an ashram in Kerala or sit on top of a dolmen in the west of Ireland and, you know, and, and try to find your center. That's all fun and that's all a nice experience, but it's not going to take you to the center. You can, you can you can just as much find your center in the suburbs of Cincinnati as you can in you know Tibet. It's as simple as that. You don't need to buy into the package. So uh, that's something uh, to think about is that ultimately our consciousness is just like every other aspect of creation of every other aspect of the universe is that it's it's an asymmetrical um, it's an asymmetrical uh, concept moving ultimately towards a oneness, a centered uh, balance. And the path towards that can be taken in many ways. The important thing is that you're taking the path. And I do recommend the book, uh, Right Hand, Left Hand, The Origins of Asymmetry in Brains, Bodies, Atoms and Cultures by Chris McManus. Uh, it's a very easy book to read, very interesting. And uh, also drawing on the left side of the brain is another book, the woman's name is Gase Betty Edwards, I think her name is. A very good book with works, works uh, things on the back and that will help balance the left right brain. That will um, as a result of that will help balance to extrapolate that further into your consciousness and then you'll find you'll have a better life. So uh, you don't have to sit in a wigwam uh, you know, smoking a peace pipe or you don't have to go into a sweat lodge listening to some new age guru you know, talking crap stole, with, with stolen wisdom from the natives' peoples that his ancestors wiped out. Uh, that's interesting too, like we play a, a karmic death there. I find that interesting too. So anyway, uh, like everything else in life, it's ultimately a solitary path. And that solitary part is an asymmetrical one back towards being the center. So that's it, the asymmetric nature of our consciousness. Thanks, Mike.